Okay. Somehow, how did this happen? I <laughs> tore my coat. I almost ran into a car today. It was very cold and I wasn't watching. My head was down. I was sort of mesmerized by my shadow and consequently walked almost into a parked car. Now, when you are run over by a parked car, you've got things on your mind. And the things on my mind were how goddamn cold it was. And anyway, I jerked myself out of the way at the last minute so the parked car could not run me over. And I think that might have been when I tore my coat because my hands were in my pocket. This is a coat that my father gave me after he had worn it for quite some time. And I, when I wear it, I think of him. And when I think of him, I sometimes smile and sometimes I get sad that I didn't spend more time with him than I did. But that's what happens when people end up dying. So clearly, this is really screwed up. So how am I going to fix this? Well, I'm not going to do it the way that a tailor would do it. I'm doing it a different way. I'm going to sort of gather it together and make a very unhidden <laughs> seam. Oops, you're not seeing what I'm doing, but you will in a second. I used to love sewing. Uh, there was a little moment in my life where I would buy old Navy uniforms and tart them up with adding stripes and extra buttons and bits and pieces of brocade and brouhaha. And um, there's something that's very relaxing about sitting on the couch at the cabin in the rain and sewing an extra stripe on your uniform. It wasn't enough that you were a captain. You had to be a super duper captain or a lieutenant junior grade or whatever it might have been. I like uniforms and costumes and hats and stuff. And I remember I was sitting on the couch and my brother was sitting on the chair across the room. And I don't know what he was sewing. I think he was sewing a sail. And I was sewing a uniform or something. Uh-oh, what have I done? hate when this happens. And uh, there was something very just domestically charming about that scene to grown men in their 20s sewing silly things. And when I'd lose a button, I would sew that on with like eight feet of <laughs> thread because um, I hated buttons coming off. So I'm just thinking that Yes, this is going to look like a fencing scar on my coat, but it will 
at least hold together for another season or longer. And then now that I have the thread and needle out, I might sew on a button on a shirt that I can remember where I put the shirt. So what, what do you do for just relaxation? A friend of mine, he knits beautiful scarves and sweaters and stuff. That's what he does to keep his hands busy. Um, I certainly scribble with fountain pens a lot and I find that very relaxing. But this is um, almost as relaxing until I poke my finger. This is very, very thin, rather worn fabric that I'm sure is quite fragile this time. It's just this very, very, very thin cotton. So I have a feeling that these stitches could come out pretty easily. Not come out, but tear further. So this may just last one more, one more season, but one more season is fine. When I get up to where the pocket is and the tear becomes a little tiny bit more complex. I may run into other issues, but as long as I'm going in a straight line here, it's fine. Having a job or a pastime or a, a something like this is actually very <sighs> soothing. Um, it's just calming. And productive at the end of the day, I'll say, I, I just pricked myself that I can say I sewed a ripped coat. So another thing, um, We're having a, an opening of the next show is going to occur on Easter Sunday. And I, I know that that might rub some people the wrong way, but it might rub other people just fine. I know that some people will say that they can't be here on Easter because they're going to be with their grandma or their family or in church or in an Easter parade walking down the avenue in their bonnet with all the frills upon it. But maybe that can be part of our opening celebration. Funny Easter traditions, bunnies and chocolate and eggs and 
the resurrection of some make believe <laughs> fairy tale. Uh, okay, that's going to get me. But uh, anyway, it's, I think maybe saying that uh, let's combine this opening with the resurrection of the gallery with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's going to get complicated. This is where the most of the strain would... Oh, look, it's ripped there, too. Dear. This could have happened. We have these handles on our door in our building that occasionally catch me. When I open the door, the metal handle gets caught in my sleeve or my pocket and so this, that's where this could have happened. Okay, so we've got that here. I don't want to sew the pocket closed, do I? No, I don't. Ouch. That hurt. Going through lots of fabric layers here. I imagine that the coat might hang a little crooked because of this. Come on, go through. Ouch! Needles are sharp. Hot glue guns are hot. Uh oh. I think I think this is the weak link of my repair here. A very weird dream, or not a dream, I had a pain in my chest last night. I thought, is this what a heart attack feels like or what? wasn't quite sure. But I managed to live through the evening, so why is, is there a knot in here? There is. No, there isn't. Come on, thread, pull. Where's my friend Russell? He, he's a good sewer. Should be giving me helpful hints. Russell has created many puppets where he has used needle and thread to connect. 
connect all of the bits and pieces together. He sort of sews like I am, a little bit artistic, let's say, a little bit freeform. I think I'm going through more layers than just this outer layer here. I think there's some inner lining that I'm also, it's attached to this part of the coat. So I'm, it's getting to be a little bit sturdier back there. My three-quarter roommate was, when he was young, one of these reenactors that reenact the battles of the Civil War, the, the Revolutionary War. And he was a red coat, and his regiment that he belonged to would make their own uniforms from scratch. and. Um, they couldn't use a machine, they had to sew using a needle and thread. They were, they reenacted that element as well. Something was kind of neat. An acquaintance of mine has a magnificent collection of British Revolutionary War era uniforms. They're, they belong in a museum, but he has them in his house. And when I saw them, I could not believe how beautiful they were. Lots of brocade and a bullion thread, and they, they had little tiny, little tiny uniforms. And I said, what are these for? Well, those are for the pet monkeys that they had in India, the British. To bring their pet monkeys, have them dressed in the same regimental uniform. Well, there we go. So we'll call this a day. That looks awful, but it's, it's, it's my awful. It looks awful. Now this, am I going to fuck this up or what? One of the neatest things that this guy had in his uniform collection was 
um, these pair of boots that were just absolutely astoundingly amazing. The leather um, was gathered uh, along the calf and it resembled sort of pleating. It was just amazing. Um, I didn't realize that leather could do that. It looked in many ways very fragile, but it also looked really strong too at the same time. Well, see, it looks like a fencing scar. This was the before, it looked like that. And now it looks like that. So I don't believe in hiding my, my flaws on my body or my clothing. Look at that butt. Where did that come from? Where is it going? Okay, I'm done. That was relaxing. Relaxing. So what do you do, and you and you and you, to relax? Some of you might pull the legs off of daddy long leg spiders for to relax, and others of you do sewing or knitting or crocheting or playing the ukulele or what? What do you do? Okay, bye.